So what do we have now? You have installed Asterisk server. And you have some devices to connect to it. You want to organize your internal network. You want to connect all the phones to Asterisk and make a test call from one phone to another. Now, about the phones. There are several types of them. First, you probably have it in your room. It's just a simple phone. The second one is an IP phone. Well, to understand how it works, just it's better for you to think about it like it's a mini computer that just looks like a phone. The third type of the phone that we can connect to our asterisk server is a soft phone. Well, it's just a program, nothing more. You install it, you give it a username and a password to connect to asterisk, and it's working. And finally, you can install an application on your mobile phone and use your internet connection there to make calls. Now, let's look at the first two. And the first thought you should have is, how the hell do I connect my traditional phone to the computer? And it's a good question, because you see, they have different connectors. This one is for a traditional phone line, and the second one is for an IP phone. You probably noticed that the second one is the same connector as one you plug into your computer to have an internet connection. Remember, it's just like a mini computer that only looks like a phone. By the way, their names are RJ45 and RJ11. But let's get back to our traditional phone. If we want to connect it to our computer, then we need an adapter. And it looks like this. You can see the exact model name and approximately how much they want for it. If you want something more reliable than this device, then just look for a better one. For now, let's just see how it looks from the back. Here it is, and the first port, well actually the first is power. The next is the port where you plug your analog phone. Here it goes. That's it for the phone. And let's look at the last two. It's LAN and WAN. You actually need WAN. You connect this port to the computer which runs asterisk server, or you connect it to a switch that is also connected to this computer. Note that this device gets an IP address, so that later you can access it from your web browser. And that is necessary, because that's how this device is configured. You go to your web browser, visit an IP address of this device, and make configuration there. So your server needs to be properly configured to give IP addresses to all devices that are connected to it. Just a tip, this is done with DHCP technology. Well, okay. Before we start configuring asterisk server, I'll give you a few more tips. The first, and probably the most important, is always look into your log file. And you can use this tail command. It will show any errors just as they appear in the log. And if something really bad happens, you can use the following command. With this one you can view all the packets that go through your network card. And now I will show you what to write in asterisk config files. Just to make it simple for you now, remember that any new device is just a bunch of lines in zip.conf. So you have a new phone, write some lines in zip.conf configuration file. What I have now? I have my usual phone and an adapter, and I want to connect it to asterisk server. So I'm going to zip.conf and go to the end of the file and start writing the following. First, in square brackets, we write a name of the device we want to connect. It's up to you, it's your choice. Then let's write a type of this device. It will be friend. And there are also two other types, peer and user. What's the difference between them? They tell asterisk how to work with incoming SIP requests. For example, peer will make a request to a configuration entry using the IP address and a port number. When using type user, then a username field of a SIP request will be matched against a configuration entry the name we just wrote in square brackets. And when you use type friend, 
it enables matching for both peer and user. This is usually used for SIP phones. The next settings are username and secret. Well, secret is your password for this phone. For the device you connect, I mean. And in the username field, just repeat what you wrote in square brackets. Password 123. No, no, no 123. Never use shitty passwords. You don't want to pay for someone's phone calls, do you? The next parameter is host. And it is used to find a peer that connects to asterisk. Use dynamic to tell the phones to register. And now the context. This is definitely a main parameter. It defines where our phone can call and how it does it. Well, not the parameter, but the context is the main thing. The context is our dial plan, and a dial plan is a heart of asterisk server. We'll get back to it and create a simple context in a different file. And now I will add a few more lines. For security, I have my phone on my local network, so I don't want to allow any other IP address even to try to connect to my server. Of course, using this username and a password. So I deny everything and permit my local network. And the last parameter is can reinvite. Set it to no. It's hard to explain quickly what it does, but I hope setting this now will save you some time. Because you can break your head asking yourself why all my calls stop after one second. Now restart your asterisk server. And let's go to its shell with asterisk minus r command. You can view the devices connected to asterisk with sip show peers command. You see, now it has the record, but the host is unspecified, which means that our phone just hasn't connected to the server. So now we have to configure a device, an adapter, that will be connected to our server. And I repeat that configuration is done through your web browser. But what's an IP address of it? Well, I hope you can find it out. At least read the manual. For example, you can call a special number and it will tell what an IP address is. Or the manual says go to this IP address, it will be there. But uh, I know what IP address I have, so I just write it and enter. By default, and the password for admin is empty. Again, read the manual. And here we have a configuration panel. You need to go to voice over IP setup. And here you enter user ID and a password from the configuration we just wrote. You can change a number for this phone and check these two boxes. Now the thing I forgot is here at the top. I forgot to check this box, enable support of SIP proxy server. Enable it. I spent a lot of time and couldn't understand why it's not working. If you have this device, check this box. If you have another device, find similar. Now go down and here you can put your domain. Uh, well, just uh, an address of your asterisk server. Go at the bottom and click apply. Now to maintenance, and backup and restore, save all settings and reboot. Your device will be restarted and hopefully, hopefully connected to the asterisk server. After that, check it in asterisk shell. Seep show peers. And yes, it has a host. Finally, finally we got a device connected to asterisk. It was a usual phone plus an adapter. Now let's see how to connect a soft phone. Let's install one. So I go to the Ubuntu Software Center, search for a Kiga, and install it. Then run it. Go to the menu, accounts, and in this window, add a SIP account. Put some information here, name, whatever you like, 
then an address of your asterisk box or just a domain name user and authentication user well i just put the same a gigaphone and the password oh, okay let it be one two three now click ok and of course of course it will not connect to your asterisk why because we haven't written anything about our second device so let's go to sipconf and add some lines what i forgot here and that caused errors for me it is one line that's it host dynamic don't forget it now reload the configuration and see our connected devices and great we now have two devices connected so now you know how to connect a phone to your asterisk server by the way you can use just one line to see the connected devices just use asterisk minus rx flex and now we will make a call we will make a call from asterisk to our soft phone and the command for this is originate then we have protocol sip our phone ikiga phone and then application playback hello world this means when you pick up the phone, you will only hear hello world, and that's it. Here is a Kiga. So I run this command, and I instantly have an, uh, an incoming call. I answer it. Hello world. Great, it's working. The same way you can test any phone connected to Asterisk. Just change the name of the phone in the command. So, you have installed Asterisk. You know how to connect phones to it. It doesn't matter which type of the phone. Analog phone plus an adapter. IP phone, which is pretty much the same. Or a soft phone. On your mobile phone, you also use a soft phone. It can even integrate to your operating system, and when you make a call, it will let you choose whether you want to make it over the internet or a traditional line. You can try out this too. Linphone, that runs on a lot of operating systems, and SIPDroid. Or maybe you can find another one that is better for you. The only very basic missing part of configuring asterisk is that you don't know yet how to define phone numbers that devices can call and how to do actual calls. I will tell it in the next video.